Dear viewer, good evening and welcome to Spotlight. With me tonight, Reverend Frank Julian. Frank, welcome to MEA. Thank you very much for having me. It is a wonderful honor and privilege. Thank you. Frank, I know you are involved so many times, so many organizations, doing a lot of things. But tell me about yourself. Myself. Well, what school do you go? How you, you know, where do you graduate? Yeah. Where do you work? And well, when I was young, uh, I'm 66 now, <laughs> right, you know. but uh, graduating high school, I, uh, my father had been a male nurse, believe it or not, in World War II, kind of like wow. MASH, mm -hmm. and he had pictures in the scrubs, and so I decided to go into nursing. Um, I was a, a Catholic, and I, I thought of the priesthood, but I thought maybe I can get out of the priesthood if I become a nurse, I'll help the sick. Yeah. And so I went to nursing school, but I did meet my wife <laughs> yes. at, at nursing. She was going to be a nun, and we went to Grand Valley State University mm -hmm. in Grand Rapids where we met, and we got our nursing degree. And I uh, came home to our family here in Dearborn. I was raised in Dearborn, and she was from Trenton, and uh, we lived in Dearborn. And uh, we began to raise our family, but the more and more I got involved, I then ended up getting ordained as a minister in the International yes. Pentecostal Holiness Church and Good. I pastored a very large church. Very, uh, We had a remodeled Kmart's, about 750 people, uh, dynamic, very diverse. And uh, it, it's all, And plus I nursed, I was a nurse, I did both for 40 I years. I uh, worked with the physically disabled downtown Harper Hospital Rehab for 14 years and then 20 years with home care, visiting the people in the um, Homes, primarily the elderly, but I always had a heart for the older As people. Well, of course, you know. But then I did go to Africa through the church. Yes. And we're going to talk more about this. Okay. Is when I was confronted with the AIDS epidemic 20 years ago wow. in Botswana. I see. Right now, what's your position with the church? Because I heard about a lot of activities here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was a senior pastor and with the church for 35 years. When I retired, I became like a pastor emeritus. It's called Pastor Emeritus at Large. Okay. But um, I'm going to another church because it's hard for the uh, other, the head guy, for two head guys. So yes. one had to go. <laughs> but it's good. And this new church, we're at Detroit World Outreach uh, in Redford, Michigan. And I'm i uh, like a, a teacher, but I, I'm retired. I don't want to be the head guy, and I don't yes. want to, you know, but they're very wonderful and very supportive of my organization that we'll talk about in a minute called Fawn Fighting AIDS with Nutrition. Yes. Let's talk about that organization. And I know you do uh, a lot of mission to a lot of more than five, six African nations. Yes. Tell me more about yes. it. Well, 20 years ago, um, I was the missions pastor during the, that 35 uh, years and I went to Africa. I was invited, and um, it was uh, it was actually uh, 2001, and our, my first trip, I was so green, but we were in Cape Town, South Africa, and they said to me, they said, would you want to go see Nelson Mandela's oh. pris prison cell, you know, mm -hmm. prison? Yes. And I said, oh, absolutely. So we went, we took a boat, and the former prisoners were now the uh, tour guides. It was a museum, yes. and they actually stood in Mandela's cell. But they began to torch, tor talk to us of the torture that he went through. You know, they would make him dig a hole and get in it and bury him and then urinate yes. on him. And they would ration the, the black people, got 20% of the food, the colored 80 and the white 100. I was so appalled that on the, on the way home on the boat, I began to weep. I, I did. I said, God, this is horrible. I said, L let me do something. Help me to help them. <laughs> this is wrong. And it was out of that, the next day we flew up to, I didn't plan it. When I look back now, I understand the answer to my prayer was to help those who were dying with AIDS. Yes. This was 01, there was no treatment at the time, no medication, no, and so. How you help them? What happened is I saw this graveyard with all these fresh graves, and we went to the home that we were staying at, the Minister of Education. They were taking care of the Americans, we were in a nice place. Yes. And um, the wife was a nurse, and she came home, and she said she had just been visiting these AIDS patients. The pastor's wife, her sister, 38 years old, just died that week. I, and, and I said, what can I do to help you? Okay. And she said, send Ensure, the little can of liquid nutrition, but it's high potency, it's chemically form, formulated. And I said, and, and a light went on in the room. I'm not, I'm, we knew something special happened, so we took a picture. We have the picture of the moment. 
and I never thought I'd still be collecting liquid nutrition 20 years later. We've sent about 500,000 cans, primarily with the help of World Medical Relief. We partnered We're with them. We're going to come to that. Yeah. But are you doing till now? Till now, you so what that? happened is uh, we you know, primarily went to Botswana, South Africa, and um, people were generous. I didn't even know what was happening. They did an article. I came home from Africa. I went to the local paper because I had won a smiling contest. I smiled for seven hours and 43 minutes and won $10,000. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> With McDonald's. With, uh, this was in 2000. So I went to the reporter because she had put me on the front page. And I said, you know, I, I'm home from Africa. And they said, I, I can't mail the, the, the insurer because I took a case to the post office. They thought I was foolish. Yeah. They said, no, you have to ship this. This is heavy. So I said, would you put a little article in you know, and maybe other people will give me, and I'll put it all together, I'll ship that. Okay. Well, instead of putting a little paragraph in the middle of the paper, she put that on the front page. That's and that's when I would visit patients, their daughter would go in the, the, the room, you know, and write me a hundred dollar check, and, and I, you know, I said, you know, what's going on? But it began to snowball, and people have, it's like the miracle of the five loaves and the tree. Yeah. The bread keeps breaking. I keep that's feeding. Nice. I keep, nice. yeah, when you do something good, you know, God help. God is with yes. me in yes. this. Yes, I do yes. know that. And I've been to Africa, like I said, now six times. Yes. I've gone back. I've, I, I went into their little huts. They would let me in to the, see the dying. And I would feed them. I don't want to cry, but wow. it, it was very uh, touching for me. Probably the most wonderful moments of my life to help the sick. There's a lot of poor people supporting you. Uh, There's a lot the, of people yeah. that have really been faithful churches, schools, um, primarily World Medical Relief. I know I keep yes. saying it, but if it had not been for them, we wouldn't have survived because yes. there's connections that they have, so they funnel the support I from Bats, uh, Beaumont Hospice, other hospices. Because when someone would die, they would have three, four cases of this liquid nutrition left over, and they wouldn't know what to do with it. Yes. And they would call World Medical Relief and say, do you want it? So they said, we'll take it. So then Dr. Sampson, he said, all the liquid nutrition we get, we'll give to you. I said, okay. And it began, you know, and sometimes he would call me up. He'd say, you know, I don't have a, somebody to pick it up, but this lady died. Would you go get, they have three cases, four yeah. cases. So I would go, and the husband, I, and this is touching too, they would give me the insur, and he would follow me, like, to my trunk, you know. Wow. And I would say, we're going to give it, this insur to people suffering in Africa. And he, you know, felt better. The wife is dead, but at least they're doing something good for somebody, you know. And still you're sending, you know. Well, we're still sending, which is to, to many countries many, there. It's expanded because yes. of our relationship with World Medical yes. Relief because they ship all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so we, we ship now through them. So where they go, if they feel there's a need for it, they will uh, put our nutrition with their shipment. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, for instance, last summer when there was a big explosion in Lebanon, um, we were part of that. We, we sent the food. Sent about six containers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's talk now about the World Medical Relief. Okay. Give me about the history. What they establish and what they do. Yeah, it's an amazing thing because it has kind of a similar origin as my group, yes. Fighting Against Nutrition. They were started by a woman oh, named the 80s. Yeah, Irene Oberlin, yes. and she wanted to help the Korean orphans of the Korean War. Mm -hmm. She saw a TV show and she felt she had to do something, and she put the word out, send me things for them. And they would begin to do stories about her, and she would end up collecting, and her garage was full, and it snowballed. Mrs. Kresge of the Kresge Foundation yes. uh, gave a substantial gift. They were able to buy a nice building where they could store and ship down in Detroit. And so they have existed, I think, since 1953. Yes. And have sent, you now they're a large organization and send all kinds of medical equipment to third world countries that here they want to almost throw it out for the latest, but there they can how get they it. get the I know you said that a board of directors, you know, how they get those equipment and, and medical supplies? Is it from doctor, hospital, factories? Yeah. Tell me more. Well, it's really gone out the word especially in the Detroit area. I would love to see this go out beyond Detroit, okay. but they, the hospitals know of them. 
the uh, different hospices. My own personal doctor, when he retired, he said, what's the number for World Medical Review? I want to give all my, my uh, office yes. equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, tables, examination tables. I said, beautiful. So it comes from all these different sources that U of M, they have a wonderful yes. program now where they implant pacemakers, someone who had died with a pacemaker, but if there's five years left of the battery, yes. they, they sterilize it, and then they send it with, uh, and it's or, you know, organized that a surgeon would go and yes. implant it. And so they're recycling the, yes. the medical from many, many sources throughout the area. Okay. What, what's in the medical? You know, we have a building. What size of the building? Oh, like 80,000 yeah. square feet. About long. 8 to 10,000 yeah. square feet. Okay, what kind of refurbished medical equipment, what kind of medical supplies oh, there is there? Yes. Well, there's Tell me more. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. because I, I, I love them. They, uh, they have our section where they store the liquid nutrition, but they have medicines, they have a pharmacy, they have a yes. special pharmacy license with pharmacists, of which they help the, the local people too, uh -huh. uh, as well as walkers, wheelchairs, but they have like ultrasound machines because Big machines. They, they're, they're, they're things that yes. they don't want to use here, yeah. but there they're still good. And everything Absolutely. is tested before it's shipped. So it refurbish and certified yes, it has to be we before it ever goes. Because uh, actually one time by accident something went that didn't work and they were, you know, really uh, told this can never happen again. You yes. can't, yeah. And so, Go ahead. So in other words, it's, it, it is a lot of um, medical equipment. I think even X-ray machines, and dental chairs. Yes. Uh, I go in the in the warehouse, and it's it's just amazing all of the supplies that are being sent around the world. I sit on the board of directors, and I go there sometimes, and I see thousands of thousands of of medical refurbished medical equipment, yes. medicine and pilot and pilot, yeah. you know, and 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 uh, uh, tools for every surgery. Oh, that's you right. Have, and that's very expensive. We talk on sometimes seven, eight hundred, a thousand dollar, and we have them by dozens. Yeah, yes, they're they're sent. They're sent yes. from hospitals. They're sterilized. They're sterilized, and then they're yeah. categorized. And a lot of them are still in a package. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. they open a package that says expired. Yes. But once they re, you know sterilize it and, and you know check the date of the anesthesia, the anesthetic, yes. it's still good for a couple more years. So it's all all recycled. It's it's yeah. a, it's an amazing. And anything thing. we send, it's at least one year. Before yeah. that, yeah, it's got to be That's, at least. Yeah, yes. It, it, Which country we 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 sent to? Oh my goodness! That, I know that's hard to answer yes. because there's so many all throughout Africa. Yes, the ones that I know: Senegal, the, the Sudan, Jamaica, uh, uh, yes. oh, South America, Yemen, Africa, yes. uh, yeah. Lebanon, of course, the Philippines, yes, uh, Botswana, and also uh, Tanzania, Kenya. These are all, you know. How the, how they know this country need this? Do we have to con contact yeah. a hospital there or how? Let me give you a yes. personal example because yes. I went to Uganda about a year and a half ago okay. through World Medical Relief. And it was funny because uh, Dr. Sampson, he knew I was going, but you know, I was kind of new to the board, but they called him up. Dr. Sampson, he's the CEO. He's the CEO. And they said, one of your board members are here in Uganda. And he yeah. said, who's, who's there? <laughs> so yeah, Pastor Frank went, you know, but they were very good. We went to a, a hospital where they had sent two shipments uh, in Uganda, yes. in, in, which had included the liquid nutrition, which is why I wanted to go. They had connected me with a nurse, and it really, uh, you know, these are hospitals in Africa. They're yes. a little different than America, but they're still, you know, helping their sick, you know. Sure. And so um, they were very, very pleased to... Uh, you know, but what happens is that to answer your question, we have ambassadors. Yes. These are people like from each of the countries yes. to help the shipment get past, you know, the dock. It, and it, it has to be non-profit to non-profit. Yeah, yeah. And you it, cannot send it to private right, uh, hospital, yes, yes. Or private doctor, or you know. And, it, and it's all cleared yes. before it lands. Okay. Because of these ambassadors, so it doesn't yeah. get stuck in customs yeah. and sometimes complicated. Absolutely, exactly. you pay for that, plus yeah. it could be expired yeah. before. Exactly. Uh, so the, ours, we know ours got through, I went, and I was told that the liquid nutrition that we sent went for the sick children, it went for the pediatric yeah. hospital across the street. I was so touched by that, here's the, around the world, and, and I got to tell you a wonderful story about Dr. Sampson. 
because he went to, I think it was the Sudan, which has been having, you know, some struggles politically, and, um, you know, uh, he had just flown with a couple of people, and when he got off the plane, there was, uh, like, big celebration, and he said to himself, he told me this, he says, boy, there must be somebody important on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> it was for him. Yes. They were and, all and thankful honestly, for what he had done through yes. World Medical Relief. We sent to a lot of Arab countries like Syria, Palestine, you know, Egypt, Ar Armenia, uh, Armenia, uh, Yemen. In Yemen, we sent them a lot of container because yes. of this. Too. In Iraq, yes. north of Iraq, yes. we sent a lot of uh, yes. equipment yes. and all that. So, if, for example, non profit organization or hospitals in, in Lebanon. They want to get those medical equipment, medical supplies. How do they go by it? Well, what they need to do is contact the, our World Medical Relief, primarily okay. through the website. Yes. And in the website, there is actually an application. Sure. Because I'm working with the American Indians, okay. the First Nation, uh, and uh, we've just been through this whole process because they're considered a separate nation, even though they're here. I know. Yeah. So um, we can and send they're not a profit. You yeah, know, and they, we can yeah. send it to them. So yes. we're really working because they, they have a lot of needs. So I understand the rest. So they have to go. They have to fill out the application. The application. Okay. Once the application is approved, yes. You know, and there are some criteria that are, uh, you know, and do they to have go. to pay anything? No, no. And then what happens is they. Will then give what Dr. Sampson calls a wish list. Yes. Whatever we have, you can have. You let us know. You know. But the only thing that they do have to pay for uh, is like the shipping. Shipping and handling. And shipping and handling. Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's well, about ten, fifteen thousand dollars? Yeah. So yes. it, but it, but uh, it does work for, you know, the operation of World. What's it? Yeah. Because you have to pay to hire people to. Of course. Handle it. Yeah. What average container? We sent 40 feet container, right? Full, full. full. Over what four. average worth of that uh, 40 a feet container? Average worth? Yes. I've been told like like a million dollars. Wow. Yeah. I know but the they, one they we don't pay anything to, near that. But yes. but because of the equipment and everything, and today's world is very expensive. Yes. And so uh, you know, so I don't think I'm over exaggerating. But again, it varies per container. Yes. What and, they and when get. we send the machine, we put all the the supplies for the machines and everything. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, world, yeah. yeah, what they call DME, durable medical equipment, mm -hmm. hospital beds, wheelchairs, walkers, even prosthetic limbs. Yes, yes. It's, it's really yeah. amazing. And a lot of medical supplies. All kinds you of know, medical supplies. I mean, all kind of medicines. Oh. One and time all I went to Honduras, the country yeah. of Honduras, and this is a while ago, but I said to Dr. Sampson, I said, we want, we're going to do four clinics, four medical missions. We're hiring a Honduran doctor, but we're bringing the ancillary staff, but we need medicine. I was able to get $40,000 worth of medicine for $2,000. Wow. That was like a minimal fee, yes. you know. Uh -huh. And, and we, we treated 1,100 people. It was, it was wonderful. It's great. When, when, the, when the supplies come from a hospital or that, who divide them, who sterilize them, who arrange the whole thing? I know you don't have so many workers there. I've been there, but how we do it? Well, this is the our favorite part, and, and again, referring to Dr. Samson, but his favorite thing, he calls them like God's angels of mercy. Yes. And that's the volunteers. Those are the volunteers. The volunteers, and yes. there are so many from so many different What are they coming from? Like There's school, school college, students, yeah, yeah, students, medical yeah. students, yeah. nursing uh -huh. students, yes. uh, as well as retired nurses, yes. um, and other uh, medical professionals. And, and I see, said, we get like Hundred of thousands throughout the year. Yeah, many yeah. many hours. They tabulate yeah. the hours of the yes. uh, of the volunteer. And uh, with COVID, um, there was kind of a, a snag. So everything yeah. was slowed yeah. down. Yeah. But it's now got picked back up, and they are really uh, again returning to volunteer. And okay, if somebody and they want to cheerfully. volunteer, they they like oh, absolutely they, they love it because they, they get doing purpose. something. Yeah. yeah. How how somebody want to volunteer or somebody want to donate medical equipment? Like urgent care, clothes, or yeah. things like this. Yeah. How they how they go by? What I would say is, um, I'm going to give the phone number, and okay. if it can be put at the sure. bottom what of the screen. Like? So yeah. it's real easy. Yeah. It's it's three one three. Okay. And then it's eight six six. Okay. Five three three three. Okay. Again, it's three one three eight six six. Five three three three. And we're gonna put it in. Yes. Slide it and if they call screen. and they say, you know, I've got uh, some medical supplies, can or we go and my get walker, my wheelchair. For example, can we go and get the supplies? From World Medical Relief? No, from the 
urgent oh, care, for example. They, they, we we have people that you know pick up. We have a you truck. Know, yeah, truck. They go there and pick trucks. them up, and you know. yeah, they they have to arrange all that. Yes. But if you can bring it in, that's even better. They have you yeah. bring it around to the back. You put it at the dock. Um, you know, there and I and people will call me up and say, "Can you take this down to World Medical?" Yeah, see, sometimes so it's hard to take. We, but yeah, we, if you have a truck to come and pick it up, it's much easier. But they do, and they've got workers. Yeah. You know, yes, they could always use more. I think he's looking for more help. Okay. Besides the medical supply and, and medical equipment, I believe we have mattress, we have pampers, we have. I mean, a lot. Talk me. Talk yes, me about it. Yes, yes. They, they what they call blue pants. Uh -huh. What they call the PPE. Yes. They have so much PPE and the beautiful. And we donate by hundreds of thousands. Yes. And when when the COVID hit, and, you know, when die. the COVID hit, yes, we were a primary source of PPE because we had it all there. Yes. Ready for them. Yeah, then it was gone, but now it's been replenished, uh -huh. and so if people need that, that you know, they can they can get that, especially for their fire department. They're you know, whatever we, we uh, furnished uh, that. Okay. If if somebody, not for shipping overseas, uh, if somebody, for example, sick and uh, and he need a, will, a, a bed, hospital bed, and he cannot afford it, can he go to World Medical Relief and, and get yeah, it, for I, I don't want to speak out of turn because yeah, I want to sure. be sure I'm saying yeah. the right thing. Sure. But I think that they can if they call with their need and and i think things have been you know provided for people and even even medicine uh, uh, through, the, through pharmacy, the pharmacy yeah they, they would they would need a prescription from the doctor to, yes. to get the medicine but sometimes they cannot afford to yeah and though we have a program we have a program yeah, probably yeah. a few dollars for yeah, yeah exactly great yeah. it definitely helped the poor absolutely yeah now after all that you come to produce a movie I'm excited is, to talk about is that. that. <laughs> and this is the hit. Tell us how, how that idea came to you. Well, you know, I've pastored for 35 years, and I've been doing fawn for 20 years, and we're having a big 20-year anniversary celebration at the Detroit World Outreach Church, and I think on July 30th, which everybody's welcome, and we're going to show the movie. You can see the movie Good. at the thing. So the movie, basically 10 years ago, this uh, gentleman from the church came to me and said, I feel... God talked to him that I should write this book about like a what if I would have become a priest and a nun and we but we didn't marry and we still loved each other and they split us up. And it's a love story. It's a love story. You go to yes. Africa and form Fawn. But, but the religion touched yeah. to it. But then yeah. the whole story of Fawn. So yes. how did Fawn start? You okay. know? Yes. So it's a, what they call inspired fiction. In, the name of the movie? The, the name of the movie is called Forbidden, Forbidden. 2018, because there's yes. a few other movies Forbidden, mm -hmm. and it is available on Amazon Prime, Google Play, Apple yes. TV, YouTube TV. We got a, 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 what they call a low-level distribution. Are you playing a role in the movie? I am. I, <laughs> yeah. I am a, and I, can I even tell them that I'm, I'm nominated? The, the movie star. I'm nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Let me, let me talk about the nomination and, and the award that movie uh, I. I'm, I'm really humbled and, and very grateful to God because it means publicity for Fawn, really. Yes. So the, the big, big Christian International Film Festival, it's the okay. biggest Christian film festival of them all, is uh, this month, May, and it's uh, May 20th. Where? Uh, in Orlando, Florida, Wonderful. and okay. I'm going. And our movie got five nominations. Wow. Yeah. It got yeah. nominated as most inspirational movie among these Christian it's films. Beautiful. Yeah. That's an honor because it, it's about the Fawn work we've yeah. done. But it's also nominated for Best Supporting Actor. That's good. Yeah. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to come home, Lord, with the prize. And then the Best Actor uh, is nominated. The Screenplay is nominated. Uh -huh. And then also the trailer, which you're going to show them. Yes, the absolutely. The trailer is nominated for Best the, Trailer. The and interviews, yeah. So I, uh, I hope to be on here after I come home with a little statue. Absolutely. <laughs> I wish you the whole thing. Okay. So tell me. It's... Uh, it's gonna be in a movie. Yeah, it's they can get it on the um, the streaming. They, they okay. you know, so it's already out. Okay. Uh, and but it is uh, definitely something that um, this community of Christian filmmakers really um, have taken a look at, and they want to honor it. It's already been honored by being nominated, right. um, because 
you know, it could very well be something. Th this film festival actually sends movies to the big film festival in France at Can wow. Cannes. You know, Can of course. Can the, I mean, that world, would be uh, you know, that would be God. If absolutely. That, but yeah. to, even if we went as an inspirational film, yes, Vaughn would be known. World Medical Relief. Absolutely. When you look at the tra the movie, yes. the first thing you see is Vaughn, but then World Medical Relief and the production company and that. Yes. But uh, so we are in partnership with the World Medical Relief. Yes. But so it really, I don't know what. I feel God is doing. God, there's something because when I went the last time to Africa, mm -hmm. you know they're getting medicine now. They all yes. get the anti. And of course, this movie take part in Africa and, oh, and yeah. the situation. Oh, it's there, an exciting and movie. Everything there, yeah. yeah. Okay. But what happens is um, when I went back, the real life story is that they were like so sick, and I was with someone else, and we were in the hospital, and I said to the nurse who was our host, who's connected to World Medical Relief you know, our liaison, and yeah. um, I said, what's the biggest need for the uh, AIDS patient in Africa? And she said, nutrition. And I said, are you saying that to me because you know that's what we... And, and she said, no, no. And they, they measure the arm, the muscle, to see if they're malnourished or moderate or okay. I see. But we heard people gagging and... and and, and see, because if they don't get the right nutrition, this Oops. medicine is very strong. Yeah. And the same get, thing happened with the COVID. No. Yeah, yeah. They uh, get the look G at what happened in India and yeah, other oh And they get the GI symptoms. They yes. get, you know, so um, the one thing about COVID that's different than AIDS, and I've asked myself, I've asked professionals, why don't they have a vaccine for AIDS if they have yes. the vaccine for COVID? And you know what they said to me? They haven't unlocked the key. They were fortunate with COVID to know the trials and get a vaccine. But but that's why people, millions of people, people still get AIDS. AIDS. But now they still they live with it, and that's where we come in. We help them live by providing this nutrition. They nice. need the the stronger nutrition because their body, like here, let's say take Magic Johnson who has it, but he's healthy and he gets the medicine and he takes uh, the food and. He's healthy. And some people they could carry it, but not affect by it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, 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 with now with, I'll be honest with you, with AIDS, if they have the HIV virus, yes, it will multiply unless they get the medicine. I see. And with the medicine, it reduces the viral count. I see. And, and nutrition it help a lot. The nutrition builds up the, the immune system. The immune, yeah. So it's a two pronged treatment. Yes. Okay. Medicine and nutrition. Yes. And the way Ensure and Boost and the others work is to actually build up the T cells or the immune system in a person. So it's ideal. So when that nurse asked me for Ensure, it was the only treatment available back then. Now of course they have the medicine, the anti-ritual medication. If somebody want to watch the movie, how how we can do that? Oh boy, I, I want them to because Fawn gets royalties when the movie is shown through uh, this, uh, like I said, Prime Video or Tubi, or okay. uh, and every quarter we get, you know, we've been getting fifty dollars, seventy dollars. But if a lot of people watch it, it increases the, like a donation. Is it that pay? Well, it's like the, like they if they get Prime. Uh, let's say Amazon Prime. It's free to watch the movie. They okay. include it in Amazon Prime. You know? okay. And so, but we still get the benefit of being paid for so many uh, minutes that it's watched. So that's how they pay us. Is there any way they could go to a website and, and purchase it? If they go to our website, which is, which is um, www.fightingaids.org. FightingAids.org, Fighting Fighting yeah, and, 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 and they could go online and they can order the DVD. Yeah, honestly, uh, Frank, uh, you're doing uh, a magnificent uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, job that helping the needies, and there is nothing rewarding to a person more than helping the needies. But when I was yeah. a young guy, I was maybe, um, you know, 20, 21, 22 in school, and I, my prayer would be, you know, let me be a registered nurse for Jesus. <laughs> you know, because I, I, I looked like I wasn't going to become a priest, you know, yeah. and I still had the vocation or the calling, mm -hmm. you know, and, and God, God allowed that through all of this. And, and, and World Medical Relief, they do an excellent, magnificent job helping the needy all over the world, all over the world. But when I went yeah. to Robin Island back to Mandela and in his cell in the boat ride home and when I was crying to God and said, let me help them, I, got, I feel he spoke to my heart and he said, if you will love the motherland, it will help race relationships at home. Yes. And now 20 years later with race really, everything's about races, races, you know, 
maybe Fawn is a guiding light that says, look, we love African people. We're helping the sick. Sure. You know, so hopefully it will Every help. person is a human being. And, and God created that human being, and we should respect it. That's right. You know. Yeah. So again, thank you so much for oh, all the all the good work you've done. Thank you for, for yeah. letting me tell my story, and I, I believe people have found will have found ways to contact. Absolutely. If Absolutely. they would ever want me to speak at their church or their mosque, yes, uh, you know, I would love to come. We could they can have a can drive. They can you know, and then you know we'd have to get it to World Medical Relief to ship it, but um, or or they could you know whatever. However, but I would love to. Uh, be out there. So again, you mentioned that any local organization, if it's mosque, church, whatever, uh, uh, that they could ask for help with the medical or medical supplies, yes, yes. and we could send it to them. Yes, yeah, we would help them. That's and also, great. I could be a speaker, and we could set up like if they want to bring the cans to their church or mosque, and then we'll pick them up Senegal, and bring it to World Med you know, Medical yeah. Relief to ship them to. Yeah around the world, and it isn't just going to Africa now, we also um, broadened our thing for catastrophic, like if there's an earthquake or, you know, so we did that with Haiti. You know? Yeah, and, we, yeah. and we, so we did send yeah. liquid nutrition to Haiti. Yes. Yeah, okay, again, thank you so much. Oh, thank that. you, God thank bless you. you. The reviewer, that was my interview with uh, a person, his name is Frank Julian, but he's a person that involved in a lot of humanitarian work, if it's, eight in Africa, if it's with World Medical Relief, and I see him there all the time, you know, helping, uh, you know, getting the equipment, uh, helping with the shipment and everything. So they do a lot, I think. And World Medical Relief, this organization, not too many people knows about it, but they're doing a great job helping the needy all over the world. They said every month one or two container worth at least five to six hundred thousand okay, of medical equipment, medical supplies, refurbished medical equipment, all over the world. And, and please, if you could help this organization, uh, they need that help. And especially if you go and volunteer, you know. And we have, you know, Middle Eastern community, we have many doctors, many nurses and all that. And they could go and volunteer, they could go and help this magnificent organization, honestly. And I meant it when I say because of the all the the humanitarian work they do thanks for watching and good night if they were worried about the impression they made they would not be lusting and pressing in the house of the lord do you sometimes wish things might have been i don't know different you mean do i regret not accepting your proposal is it true that you and Sister Margaret are getting married? Can we please stay on topic here? Can we talk about the Fawn Project? If you make that decision with that collar in the same hand, the church is going to come after you. We are excited to have you here. Yes, we are. Yes. We, we are glad to be here. Those little cans, that liquid, have given lives a fighting chance. Fawn is doing more than enough. What are you doing here in Africa? Did you come to save the poor black children from themselves? It was devastating what those rebels did to her and her husband. But my people paid them a visit. <laughs> Hija says you saved my son Shuja. Blasphemy! How dare we stand idle and allow them to continue to make a mockery of this church? Banned? We've been banned? I'm so sorry. In the Bible it says, in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh, sons and daughters will prophesy, and that the young men would see visions and the old men would dream dreams. So, old man, you got some praying to do. If you two bring scandal to her parish, you will perish.
Oh, 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 oh,